YouTube's Krosama. And here I have today is the RX Zero Maru. Uh, basically, this is the only SD Build Divers kit that is currently out, or that we've pretty much currently seen, uh, or at least one that's like a real custom. The other one has been like, you know, the Mini Pla. Uh, but other than that, I mean, this is definitely one of the coolest um, SDs I've, I've ever really seen, to be honest. Uh, and it's also piloted by the, the one and the only. You so fucking precious when you smile. From the yes, Miss Ayami, the ninja girl. So, other than that, um, basically, this is a really awesome kit, and let's go ahead and just dive right into the review. All right, so this is actually called the Kakure form, um, but I, I mean, it's basically the unicorn uh, mode. That's just kind of the way I look at it. Um, now, the one gripe I do have now, this isn't this isn't anything about the model itself. This is more about the design of the kit. I do wish uh, these, like all these, like destroy bits, uh, all this red. I wish this would have been covered. Um, I don't know, like I was kind of thinking, like this was going to be covering some of all this, but it's just kind of like part. This is more or less part of the uh, the big transformation, uh, the the big form. So. Um, I mean, it, it looks cool. It's just kind of almost useless. Like, what is the point of having uh, the visor down, the V-fin up, as well as these little uh, skirts kind of point it, point it this way? Um, I don't know what the, I don't know, the benefit of this form is overall, but I mean, it still looks pretty cool. I just think that the other form is far superior looking. Um, but if this had like more of like all this, you know, red kind of covered up, I think this form would have uh, been a little bit better. So before we switch its forms, let's just take a look at some of the details. Uh, well, the details in the head, I mean, obviously I don't have to spell it out. There's going to be a lot of, uh, of painting you're going to have to do. And once again, uh, I did do a sloppy job uh, on the paint job. But you know what? Hey, t learn from my mistakes and then go ahead and, uh, and do a little better. Now, I messed up right here in particular because um, I was cleaning up all the uh, the panel lining and I just kind of like scraped a little bit of the, the red off. So, you know, I, I couldn't really fix it per se. So I just kind of like painted over it once again and it just stands out like a sore thumb. Other than that, uh, just taking a look at the details of the head looks really good. A lot of, I mean, there's a lot of, you know, details in here. So like all this like... Um, kind of like mesh I mean that's all detail in there so uh, I just kind of like painted over it and then uh, just you know drop some um, some uh, panel line right inside there and just kind of like spread uh, e you know evenly and thoroughly uh, through those little cracks now the, the little gripe I have is basically with the v-fin this thing does not close all the way so I don't know if you are the kind of person that wants this to close all the way you could probably fix it uh, by doing something on the inside of here uh, but I think this just I don't know. I, I don't know really what I, I can do except for like, I don't know, glue it, ta you know, tack or something like that. But honestly, I'm I'm not really too concerned about it since I'm not ever going to put it back in this form uh, whatsoever. Now, the one thing that uh, I think this thing does kind of benefit from is uh, I use pretty much fluorescent uh, green for uh, pretty much most of everything. So that green is, is definitely going to stand out amongst this entire kit. So uh, I do recommend using some fluorescent green uh, paint if you have it, whether in you know the Gundam marker uh, form or if you just uh, outright buy the paint. All right, now looking at the body, the body is really nice. I love this uh, like the little destroyed mode right there. Uh, looks really good. A lot of uh, different like details you can go ahead and paint in there, especially with that all that gold trimming uh, but overall the body looks pretty damn good and now looking at the arms once again uh, a lot of paint inside here so I got black going right there gold trimming gold right here red uh, there's actually nothing on here uh, that show it, it, nothing showed that it was uh, supposed to be painted uh, up on these forearms but it kind of looks like all this like little line right here I don't know if you can really see that but that can definitely benefit from some gold trimming so um, I just kind of kept it to what the the line art and like what it was kind of showing me to paint uh, just left it as is and then you're gonna have like this little back piece right here which is definitely gonna be for the uh, the main transformation at the end of the video and looking at the back uh, I didn't even actually realize this thing had um, had thrusters so I painted, I just painted those gold because I was using gold anyways and I did kind of mess up here and there so uh, you know I, I used a fine tip uh, paintbrush and I did what I could but overall I still messed up here and there even with the cleanup um, but hey looks pretty good you're still gonna have some red right here you can go ahead and paint on the back and then I just paint this little part right here gold is like little um, kind of like cross right there and looking at the waist uh, waist is pretty simple uh, nothing really too spectacular paint some gold paint some red 
uh, looking on the back of the skirt uh, once again just painting some gold and painting some red right there and then this is going to be for the main transformation as well and for the legs, the only thing I really painted on the legs was going to be this uh, red part right there. Everything else is just kind of simplistic. Uh, then the feet, I uh, painted some red uh, right inside there on the sides. It's a little bit hard to see, but I painted some uh, some red on the sides there, as well as the gold trimming, which on the feet, I, I really messed up. It, I just I couldn't get it as smooth as I really wanted to, so uh, the gold on the feet are definitely not uh, that clean, but hey, I did what I could, and uh, overall, you know, it's, it doesn't really bother me that much. All right, so let's take a look at the articulation real quick. Uh, not really much to go over, but this is going to be on like a little peg that connects uh, on here. So it's not really going to have too much uh, room for articulation. It kind of just like rotates uh, back and forth and up and down. Uh, but it is fairly loose because it's kind of resting on uh, multiple connection points. One connection point that connects directly to uh, the head, which I will uh, I'll definitely show you when we start doing the transformation. And as for the body, uh, body, I mean, you can kind of pull it off a little bit and get a little bit of side to side, uh, but it's gonna be kind of like loose. So, I mean, I just kind of snap it in and, and unfortunately you're gonna keep it just kind of like that. So I mean, you can twist it, but Honestly, you really are gonna have to snap that in and looking at the arm basically the arm is gonna be on this little ball joint right here So obviously you can go all the way around this little part right here is just on like a little peg so it can kind of rotate uh, Then underneath here. This is gonna be on a ball joint uh, right inside there So it could definitely come up that far down here. This could also kind of move around um, This is gonna rotate underneath here. I'm not really gonna stress it too much but yeah you can definitely rotate it and then this is going to have uh one pretty much one point of articulation right here in the elbow because this is actually on a cs uh frame so it's not really going to be that bad uh this is basically a red uh cs frame so they don't have a red cs frame you could buy now but i kind of suspect since this already exists you can go at, like it's going to be released uh in the near future but i can't think of anything that would benefit from a red cs frame except for like a red frame or stray that, that's all I can really think of, unless there's like some other mobile suits that are uh, primarily red, maybe like the Sinanju and all that. Um, yeah, the, the Sinanju, Sazabi. Um, actually, even, well, no, not really the uh, Nightingale, because that kind of benefited from the white. But overall, uh, yeah, the <laughs> red CS frame is definitely going to assist with the posability of this kit. And uh, the hands right here, you're going to basically just have a little ball joint right there. And looking at the feet and the legs, uh, basically these are going to be on little ball joints right there. So uh, they can basically move about that far uh, up and about, about that far back. Uh, not really much of a spread, pretty much that much. But I mean, honestly, this is the SD you know, Gundam, so I wouldn't really expect too much in the first place. Now, there's going to be one part of articulation when it comes to this knee. Uh, so that's going to bend about that much right, right there. So about a 90 degree bend, which is really, really good. And then the feet are going to be on little ball joints right inside there. So you can kind of just rotate this all the way around. And then uh, this is going to be on a ball joint as well for the, uh, the little ankle skirt. Now the next form I'm going to head and show you is going to be this Shinobi form. Very, very simple transformation. All you're going to do is flip this visor up, exposing the little eyes. The V fin is going to fold out and then you're going to go ahead and take uh, these little like uh, skirt parts and you're going to take them off completely and just kind of rotate it to where um, they're pointing upwards. Uh, just kind of be careful, I'm trying to put it right there, and uh, you're gonna do that with the other one as well. And there you go, you now have the Shinobi form. Uh, so, really no difference, ankle skirts. Um, now, the face, uh, I think this is a pretty nice, uh, like the eyes are pretty nice, but man, I wish they would have came with more eye stickers uh, to where you can either look left or look right uh, or have different kind of expressions. But if I go ahead and take the helmet off, the one thing I can go ahead and show you, well, I'll just kind of rotate in the back, it is going to have different eyes. So it's only going to come with two different eyes, but you basically rotate it like that and you put the helmet back on and then you're going to have uh, these eyes right there, which I don't think it looks that good with all this. I think it has um, less expression overall, and uh, I'm just not really that impressed by it. I, I, I just I don't know. I'd rather get, get to the other eyes. Now, when it comes to hands, you are gonna have two of these kind of like um, you know ninja pose hands right there. So uh, I don't. I mean, it wouldn't make any sense to have both of them equipped at the same time. Uh, but having one like that, I think looks pretty cool, and you're really gonna be able to pull off some pretty nice poses uh, with like a little two finger uh, shinobi mode. 
Now when it comes to the weapons, uh, you are going to have some little kunais right here, so they just fit nice and snug uh, right into the hand right there. Uh, but if you don't want to use them, you can also store them underneath the uh, the forearms, and you can you know actually store them right here on the side uh, skirts if you you know pretty much want to. All right, and a little attachment for the kunais uh, is basically going to be like these little energy uh, beams right here. So uh, it's definitely going to add more um, kind of just like. Um, you know excitement to your kit so if you really want a nice little pose uh, with like this little energy blade kunai uh, this is going to be really really dope and uh, highly recommend it uh, instead of just using the basic kunai in my opinion and right here if you plug the kunai into a base uh, you're definitely going to be able to pull off some nice little poses uh, any kind of ninja poses that you can really think of while throwing a kunai and next you're gonna have like the little sword uh, so I basically paint like this whole thing is gonna be white and I just went ahead and painted the uh, the front black because that's what it was depicted and I painted this little uh, hilt gold and I painted this little bottom part gold and I just kind of left this white I was thinking about doing gray but you know I was just like and eh, the white kind of makes it stand out just a little bit more and this is easily gonna be able to plug right into uh, the hand like eh, come on there you go like so and with the sword in hand, I mean, it's not, to me, it's not that great. It's a little bit too short to me. Um, but I mean, whether you're gonna go ahead and uh, kind of backwards wield it or uh, do whatever you need to, I mean, I guess it's still gonna look good, but I like the uh, the kunais with the energy blades. I think those just look so much better. Now, this sword does have an energy blade, uh, you know, which is essentially the scarf that it's wearing. Um, so this part, is going to be attached to that but it's going to be for the main uh weapon for the uh i guess like the final form of the the mobile suit but it looks pretty good overall a little bit short for my taste but uh hey it kind of just matches with the overall shinobi theme now also if you want to go ahead and store the sword uh it pretty much slides in right on the back right there uh, and I think that's a pretty awesome feature. So if you really want to like just store mo most of the attachments, I mean the kunais can definitely go on the forearm, and then we also have the sword uh, pretty much going on the back of the uh, the backpack. All right, next we're gonna have the shield shuriken. Uh, so I basically painted all this white right here on the, uh, the little tips, and some parts a little bit messy, but overall, hey, when, it, when you're kind of looking at it from a distance, it doesn't really look too too bad. And I kind of suck at painting white, so I need to go ahead and uh, brush up on my skills with that. Now all this inner part right here, a lot of this this is actually supposed to be white and then the center is supposed to be uh, gray like so this part right here is supposed to be gray and all this outside part right here is supposed to be uh, white while this is supposed to re remain red um, but honestly I was like that's a lot of work um, I, I was like it, it looks fine the way it is right now even though it yeah it would look better uh, with all the white as well with a little uh, gray in the middle uh, but you know it kind of is what it is now you are going to get this little attachment piece so you can go ahead and plug it in however you want um, it's really up to you so you have multiple different points uh, that you can plug it in and it just slides right into uh, the hand like so and with a nice little pose this thing is gonna look pretty awesome uh, more than likely uh, having this with the shuriken is going to be my go-to pose um, I just think I, I don't know I just really love shurikens I think they uh, they look pretty badass and this one is no exception so that looks fantastic and uh, yeah more likely gonna be my go-to pose so let's go ahead and move on to the next things now I did fail to mention that this can actually be stored on the backpack so you just basically plug it in like that and you now have the shuriken uh, you also have the katana and the little um, kunais all attached and mounted onto the kit itself so that's gonna look pretty cool whenever you have like all the weapons pretty much mounted on the kit it's just like a full like full armored uh, mobile suit that you know is pretty much prepared for any kind of battle but I know you're probably asking what about a long distance weapon does this one come with one and the answer is going to be yes it is going to have a nice little rifle uh, there's obviously a lot of places that you can go ahead and detail I mean you really have a lot of trimming that you can go ahead and do uh, if you want to trim white gold bronze whatever you want to do uh, put some silver on there but I was just kind of like rushing this kit a little bit so I decided just to go ahead and add that one little color of uh, gold and this is going to be able to slide right into the hand like so but honestly I don't think it looks that great um, it's okay but this I don't know it just looks kind of weird having a rifle all of a sudden with all these like melee type weapons uh, but it's understandable that it probably would have something like this uh, so that way you can go ahead and uh, 
you know, have a one-up on the competition in case like they kind of uh, go a little far away from you and they're a little bit harder to reach, you can go ahead and start blasting them with a little rifle. And now even though this doesn't state anywhere in the manual um, where to like, you know, kind of put this uh, weapon at, because this is not really used for anything else, but it does have a little peg hole, so I mean, it can definitely, you know, be put somewhere around here. I would say maybe like right here on the side skirts, you can go ahead and mount it right there on the side. Um, you know, it doesn't look too bad, so if you want to go ahead and have one more weapon on top of everything else that it has, um, you can definitely mount it uh, right there on the side. So overall, it, it isn't really going to look too bad. Now honestly, I am not a fan of the scarf. Uh, it was just something I'm not really too uh, particular about. So let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and change this. All right, so here is kind of like the uh, the custom scarf. Um, I just basically used some extra little like colored film. Um, I know it looks fairly cheap. A lot of people uh, back on you know Facebook uh, didn't really have too much interest. They said it was too long. Uh, they said it was either like you know too um, too cheap looking, which you know I, I can kind of agree with. I don't agree with the length. I think I actually wish it was longer. Um, but uh, you know it just it looks better than this. I mean. Comparing apples and oranges, I mean, I think this is the thing that looks cheap. Now, would I prefer like a plastic looking scarf? Like, you know, an actual, like this was actually plastic and not film. I think that would be uh, much, much better. But I think with this, it, it, it to me, it suffices. It's supposed to be an energy scarf. Um, so I think it just, it looks good to me. I'm sorry. Um, if you do not agree, if you don't agree, then definitely make your own if you can. Um, like some people recommend in cloth. I don't really th think cloth would look that great, uh, but do however you want with it. Or if you want to go ahead and keep the default uh, scarf, you could definitely go ahead and keep that too. And next we're going to take a look at the armed armor Hattori, which is basically just the, uh, the little bird accessory that comes with the kit. Uh, but this is pretty much all of like, uh, whether it be the weapons or it's the, uh, all the little ligaments to the final form, uh, which we're going to be covered pretty soon. But as far as articulation for this, it's really not too much. I mean, this can kind of move up and down and these are obviously going to be, uh, parts of the legs and you got more parts right down here, which these are going to be the gauntlets, uh, but they can kind of rotate tape right inside there so not much in terms of um of articulation but the one thing it can do is actually get placed on a stand and here it is kind of paired up with the rx zero maru so far it looks pretty you know pretty awesome you know with them paired up together uh so it's not as anime accurate as you would probably expect it to be but overall it doesn't really look too bad now as you can see there's a lot of uh paint that was applied here uh pretty much everything that is gold was painted uh, the green was all painted a lot of the red uh in certain areas was painted um, but yeah, other than that, it looks pretty damn cool, and um, yeah, I cannot wait to go ahead and transform it. So let's go ahead and do that right now. All right, so this form is called the Nintodo, Do, which is kind of like play on words with the NTD uh, destroy mode uh, form, which you know the unicorn goes into. Uh, so I I love this form, and <laughs> I'm not even gonna lie. So this is my first time transforming it, uh, basically ever. I didn't transform it before I made this review, and I just 
oh god i love this form i think it looks really really awesome uh the only thing that i do not like is going to be the fact that the backpack is just gonna have the giant head attached to it i think that looks really goofy um in all honesty i would probably say that the uh the I don't know. I think the head probably would have benefited more uh, by just not being attached to this at all. So with taking that off completely, I think this thing looks way, way better uh, without the backpack. So, it, I mean, yeah. Uh, I mean, obviously, I'm going to keep it on there just because that's just what it calls for. But yeah, I, I would probably say if you want to pose this guy, uh, maybe the backpack is best uh, without that giant head. All right, so we're taking a look at it. Uh, overall, the little head is basically going to have uh, more, way more articulation uh, than with the SD head. So it's basically still on the same uh, joint. Can pretty much look up about that far, look down about that far, a little bit side to side and back to the forth. Um, and now this thing does have the little gimmick to where the, the faceplate can go on it. Uh, so all you're really gonna do is just take that little uh, V-fin off and you're gonna take this off the chest and basically apply this uh, right on top of there and then you're gonna put this on top of the chest so uh if you really want to keep the faceplate, which you know it doesn't look too bad uh, i don't really mind it that much but um you know i guess there was a previous form or earlier in the series because all this was black uh like pretty much most of this like the white limbs and all that a lot of this was all black but you know overall if you want to go ahead and paint it and just have like another version of this or you know have this like in this form i mean i think it looks pretty cool all right so when it comes to the body the body's going to have way more range of movement so it could basically rotate uh back and forth but there's not going to be any kind of like ab crunch this is basically on like a, a solid like turnable piece uh, so it can just you know basically rotate all around but that's way way better than what the SD could actually do now looking at these shoulder joints uh, I did forget to mention that the CS joints uh, do have the ability to go in uh, so if you see it right there like the the shoulder joints can go in as well as come out but it's a little bit tricky and sometimes it makes the uh, the arm itself come out but uh, you know as long as you have a very solid uh, foothold on it it's not going to go ahead and pop out now the uh, the overall arm is going to have pretty much the same mobility right here in the shoulders uh, and then this part right here is going to be flapping up uh, but just keep that right there in the front like so bicep is going to have the same uh, posability right there but it's also attached right here so i mean if you you know you can kind of bend this out so right here you're essentially getting the same posability this isn't really going to be able to uh you know pull out and be you know rotate is going to be acting as the uh, the bicep uh but this part right here is going to act as the same so nothing really too crazy this is still essentially going to be uh the same posability just that you're going to have a little bit more length when it comes to the bicep and having these parts as the gauntlet now this was supposed to be um gold as well but i decided against it and i forgot to paint this little part right here on the front and the back uh, red so that's kind of like my fault just don't make the same mistake I did and then the back skirt of the SD becomes the front skirt so that looks pretty cool and then when it comes to the posability of the, uh, the legs uh, right here at the hips is going to be the same so you're not going to get much of a spread um, pretty much going up going backwards is going to be a lot more um, kind of like right there and this part as you can see kind of has its own articulation uh but then this one right here is also going to have its own articulation since it's going to be on a little ball joint right there so just be a little bit careful it's not really going to break or anything but it's a little bit loose um so kind of like dangles just a little bit as you can see uh but if you you know kind of get it in the right spot or you maybe put some uh, some glue around the joint let it dry and then put uh the part right on top of it it shouldn't be that bad but overall it's not going to you know it's going to have a lot of range of movement even though it's kind of like popping off as you see overall it's not really going to be too bad and then lastly you are going to have the, uh, the little foot right here the little ankle it can basically go up about that much and back that much ankle is going to be the same and it can go side to side now also there is going to be one more bend that i failed to mention uh but this bend right here so this is just going to allow for a little bit so this bend right here uh what i which i failed to mention is kind of the main bend that you're going to be going for um so when you do it like this that little uh, ball joint is going to be stuck so that way it's not actually going to be able to um to kind of like flim be flimsy and all that uh so i don't know if you can kind of like see the difference this is just going to pop off uh whereas with this if you bend it you know right in this point then it's not going to have that loose um that loose joint now we're also going to have the flame sword which can also be mounted in the hands like so 
And as you can see, that flame sword is going to look really nice on this mobile suit as a whole. Uh, but this does have another sword form. And so we're attaching the flame sword uh, right inside here. You can basically make an extended type sword, which is going to be called uh, the Tekko. And here you have the Beam Zabato, uh, which is basically like an extended version of the uh, the Flame Sword. Uh, now, one thing I did do, I actually uh, kind of scratched up some of the paint on there, which is easily fixable. Uh, but yeah, overall, you can go ahead and you know wield this all on the real tight mode. And there it is with the Beam Zabato. Uh, so it looks pretty cool. Um, I think this part, like the kind of um, I don't know, like you, you just obviously see the little bird part, uh, which does look a little goofy, but you know, overall, I don't think it looks that bad, to be honest. Uh, so, very, very stylistic. Um, you know, it's a huge, huge weapon, uh, but this thing has one final mode. So, what you basically want to do is going to remove the sword altogether, and then you're going to go ahead and take this part, and this is going to act as kind of like uh, the magazine, and you're just going to plug it in on the inside like so. All right, so with this rifle mode, I'm really not gonna go ahead and butcher up the name, but it's like the uh, Maguna Shiki uh, Tanagashima uh, rifle. Uh, so I probably butchered that name completely. Uh, but I mean, it looks okay, but I mean, I don't know. When I look at it, I'm, I don't think rifle. I just think like weird bird head with plastic. I, I don't know. So in my opinion, it's not that great, but uh, let's go ahead and conclude the rest of this review. All right, so to start my final thoughts on it, uh, just starting with my thoughts on the SD Gundam itself, it is just fantastic. Uh, everything about the proportions, uh, just the movement, uh, you know, the articulation, all that is just super, super fantastic. And I know when competing with many other SDs, it, it's just really gonna dominate the overall competition. And also when it comes to all the different weapons that it does have, it's just going to be pretty fantastic, to be honest. Um, I'm I'm huge, huge fan of kunais. I love shurikens, and I think overall the weapon set that this kit comes with just overall matches exactly what the theme is going for. And if you can, I highly recommend maybe just get something to replace that scarf because uh, once again, I'm just not a huge fan of that plastic plastic default scarf. I think this one just looks a little bit better, especially since it's an energy scarf in the first place. So I kind of just think that it looks more like it's energy based uh, vice just a solid uh, plastic piece. Now with the real mode transformation, I think it looks fantastic. So it's kind of one of those things that I didn't really expect it to really amount to much, uh, but overall it just really surpasses all my expectations. And in some ways I do like this mode almost as much as the SD mode. But at the end of the day, you're still gonna have two different types of modes you could ultimately choose from, uh, not really including the kind of uh, unicorn mode, uh, the, the first one with the visor down, but this is a pretty decent kit overall. So my final thoughts is if you have you know, 1800 yen to spend or $1,800 in general, I would definitely recommend you trying out this kit and just, you know, have a little fun with it yourself. But other than that, guys, that is it. Definitely appreciate you for watching. And as always, definitely give me a like. Uh, you know, subscribe if you have not subscribed before. Leave a comment in the comment section below. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.